This case is pretty unique. The Raven O2 was one of the first, if not the first, it's probably one of the first, we'll say that, to invert the motherboard layout. Obviously, as you can see here, this is something that's been done more recently by the Corsair 600C, the Be Quiet cases are capable of it, and a couple of others are as well. But the Raven O2 really took a chance with it. And in doing so, they also were able to elongate the case like crazy. It's, it's pretty disproportionately long. And that's to accommodate three 180 millimeter fans that we just recently tested against a couple of 200 millimeter fans. And we found that they were among the best performing large fans of the time. So you've got three of the best fans of this form factor in a large case that's inverted the layout such that the air from the bottom two center fans goes straight into a tower cooler and the next two fans will go right in front of the GPU or through the drive cages. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA and the X299 Dark motherboard for the Intel high-end desktop CPUs. The X299 Dark is one of the only motherboards on the market with proper VRM cooling. We've tested this and found a significant performance increase over those without active cooling on the VRMs. This board was used in our recent attempt to set a top 10 record in Firestrike, and you can learn more about the X299 Dark at the link in the description below. This is also from an era when closed loop liquid cooling was not quite as popular. There's not great liquid cooling support in here. Today, the case has plenty of shortcomings that wouldn't work out very well in the modern market. One such example would be having one, two, three, four optical drive cages in the front. So you got four, five and a quarters you could put in if you want to do a bootleg operation of mass producing bootleg discs, I guess. Obviously that would never happen now. I mean, even you could leave one in there and take the next three and just accommodate another five hard drives, which by the way, would make this an amazing server case, especially because it's already got a 180 fan pushing air straight through the drive cages. But airflow was its big focus. And for airflow, the front's completely closed off. And that makes sense because it's pulling all the intake through the bottom. It's elevated pretty high, about an inch, and it's got the three high powered fans. These fans have a, a built in grill on the top. That grill is actually meant to help uh, increase the range. So they're kind of long range fans and uh, increases it in a way that when the air goes through the fan, it's almost conical. It's like completely straight line in the shape of the fan itself. So uh, that allows the air to get pushed straight into the components. Another aspect of this, Silverstone claimed at the time that part of the cooling for this case was stack effect cooling, which is more or less just a, a basic physics principle of saying that uh, because of the pressure orientation of the system and because of the uh, bottom intake, you have a stack effect, as in like a smokestack, a chimney, where the air is just going to naturally graft in through the bottom, which is kind of odd because Silverstone's done a lot of good engineering work here and they're giving a good amount of credit in marketing to just physics, which I suppose sounds cool from a scientific standpoint. It makes them sound like they're sciencey but they're taking credit away from their actual engineering. So it's a bit odd, especially because, well, you'll see a bit later, but one of the tests that we didn't do at the time, I should say I didn't, it was just me, uh, in 2012 working on this case was with the uh, whole stack effect cooling thing. If you just rotate the case, does it perform the same as when it's in its stock configuration? So if we rotate this in a way that it's like, that so the case is on its face and the fans are now intake from here which is this is the new front and the exhaust is over there it's a standard case layout at that point does it perform the same does this stack effect cooling actually have a meaningful difference or advantage and uh spoiler alert the answer is no but that's just because once you have this many fans in it any natural physics is just completely irrelevant so anyway, intake on the bottom, there's a 120 in the top for exhaust, and that's it. Other than that, your power supply gets air through the outside, through the back. It has its own filter on it, and then that air comes out of the top here as well. Right here are three switches to control the speed of the fans, and those go from 1200 to about 800 RPM. It's actually quite a significant reduction in noise, which we'll talk about in a moment. And the uh, kind of smaller gripes to 
go over them, not that you're buying this case today, but having these internal doesn't make a lot of sense. You have to remove the panel to access them. And this panel and the bar act as kind of a cable management solution because all of your cables come out of here and you're routing them this way. So now if you're removing the panel just to access your fan switches, kind of defeats a lot of the purpose of what they're doing. So that was an odd choice. This one does have USB 3.0 in the front. I think the original, original Raven 02 did not, but I'm not positive on that. Uh, USB 3.0 on the front. Uh, they do have the older style color cables. So, it, you know, red, yellow, black, all that, which we prefer, Patrick and I both, because you can actually see what the cable's doing as opposed to black out everything that's modern today. Although it certainly doesn't look as good. Kale management features are pretty bad. This case is function focused. It doesn't do any work for you kale management wise at all, but it's, well, we'll see how it cools today. One thing that they did do really well was the dust filters for the large fans. Each one has its own dust filter and the fans can be pretty easily removed and replaced, which we've done a few times now. So that's, uh, that's all the basics of the system. The main thing here is to test thermals and noise because from a noise perspective, you've got a completely closed off front. So no noise is getting out over there, which is where the user will be positioned. Uh, all the noise is kind of lower in the case. From a thermal perspective, you're feeding air within six inches straight into a tower cooler because again, liquid coolers weren't that common at this point. And uh, also feeding air within an inch straight into the GPU or well, at least around it, not straight into it because it is going kind of around either side of the card. So let's go through the thermal numbers and the noise and see how this case holds up today. So recapping, the RV02 has two advertised features that could have interesting effect on thermals, an inverted layout and the three Silverstone 180 millimeter air penetrator fans pointed straight across the motherboard. We did our normal round of tests with the fans at max speed, one additional test with three air penetrators set to low, and a final test with the entire case flipped onto its front to eliminate the supposed benefits of stack effect cooling. It is scientific fact that hot air rises, but whether or not this is enough to have an effect on a tiny metal box with high RPM fans blowing into it is doubtful. Molecular movement increases about 4% for every 25C, which is minimal when compared to what large fans naturally do. Starting with the big CPU torture charge, CPU Delta T over ambient in the torture test was 43.1 degrees Celsius, toggling the three 180 millimeter fans to their lower speed, they only have two, slowed them from 1200 RPM to 800 RPM, but the CPU temperature only rose a couple of degrees to 45.1. Uninverting the case, so to speak, resulted in a temperature barely higher than baseline, 43.6, which is well within variance and error. The three large intake fans and smaller exhaust fan push a huge volume of air, and predictably, the passive effects of heat rising are nothing compared to that. If it wouldn't obstruct airflow, we could flip the whole case upside down and get the same temperatures. The Raven 02 cools extremely well, but it's because of Silverstone's huge high quality fans and short travel distance for the air that the components are able to cool decently, not stack effect cooling. Silverstone really should just take all the credit for that one. No need to market physics. The RV02 easily tops our CPU cooling chart, and the only tests we've done that resulted in lower CPU temperatures were an alternate configuration of the open air Cougar Conquer and a test of dual 200 millimeter cooled H500P without any front panel at all. The only stock case that even comes close is another Silverstone creation that's more recent, and that is the Silverstone RL06, which uses similar pressure and fan placement configurations to the venerable Raven. For GPU torture temperatures, the Fermark element of our test pushed GPU temperature to 48.3 degrees Celsius. This only changed by 0.2 degrees to 48.1 when the case was rotated, again demonstrating that the active cooling overwhelms any passive stack effect. Lower fan speeds raised GPU temperature to 51.2 degrees, but even that's not much of a change relative to the reduction in RPM. The noise reduction is significant and audible, but the temperature increase is hardly appreciable. The Raven is beat by one other stock case in the GPU cooling category, but it's another Silverstone product, the RL06. The PM01 is also almost tied, and the Rosewell Cullinan comes surprisingly close for a glass-sided case, but no other unmodified cases cool quite as well. 
Despite the inversion, the path of air across the motherboard is the same as it is in a normal case, so air is pushed across the backplate and the GPU shroud more than it is directly into the heatsink. If we were to cool the GPU with a radiator placed above the airflow path, it would probably fare even better. 3 Mark generally causes higher temperatures than our torture test, but the Raven O2 handled it better than anything else we've tested, granting that the PMO1's temperature of 50.5 degrees over ambient is within margin of error of the RV02's 50.3 degrees. If we ever tested the RL06 in this category, it'd be a strong contender, but Silverstone is unchallenged presently, and in the very least, two of its cases are chart-topping now. The next best case after the PMO1 is again the Cougar Conqueror, which has a temperature several degrees higher. We added Blender rendering to our list of tests before 3 Mark, so the Redline 06 does appear here. The RV02 and RL06 operate within margin of error of one another. There is neither appreciable nor measurable difference between them. Like the other Silverstone cases we keep mentioning, the PMO1 and Redline 06, a large volume of air is pushed directly from the front of the motherboard to the back, or technically the bottom to the top with the inverted layout, in the Raven O2. That means it's directed straight into our CPU air cooler, which is oriented the same direction. GPU rendering for Blender is the first chart where multiple cases technically land ahead of the RV02, but just barely. The PM01, Cougar Conquer, and RL06 are all within margin of error of the Raven RV02. They are functionally equivalent in performance, and we do not have the test resolution to establish a clear difference. Again, two of those are Silverstone cases with the same airflow pattern, and the Cougar Conquer is an open-air chassis that barely insulates components at all. For noise, 44.6 dBA doesn't make the RV02 the loudest case we've tested, thanks to our recent PM01 and PM02 tests, but it's close. The Raven O2's saving grace is the inverted layout, which allows the front panel to be completely sealed while maintaining the same level of airflow as the PM01. Switching the fan controllers to low reduced dBA to 36, a huge reduction that's more than worth the relatively small increase in temperature. Unfortunately, the fan controllers are under the top panel and inaccessible from the outside, so it's not something that can be adjusted on the fly. For daily use, the 800-ish RPM setting is much more practical. So all these years later, about six, the Silverstone RV02 is still more or less the best performer on our charts. In fact, at this point, we're just up against potentially other Silverstone cases anyway. It's the PM01, the Raven 02, and the Redline 06. They're more or less the top three. So Silverstone's got a bit of a three-peat going. And the Raven 02, although it's you can't really buy it anymore, they do have other Raven cases. We haven't looked at them. But personally speaking here, I really hope they just make another one of these. Basically the same thing. Maybe a couple of modern uplifts, like the drive cages. There are four drive cages for optical drives. Obviously, we don't need those anymore. So if I were to modernize this case, like let's let's just do Steve designs a case. Let's let's play that game. Because I think that'll be it's more for me than for you. So if I'm designing this case, I want to keep all the core features the same. I like the inversion, I like the three bottom high-powered, high-pressure fans. Silverstone still makes them or makes similar ones today. So we keep this basic idea. I'd say probably the next thing I'm doing is finding a way to relocate these switches to the front of the case so that it's accessible and maybe add a third speed in there depending on what fan is used. USB 3.0 in the front's good. USB 3.1 Type-C would be even better for today. Add one of those maybe. Other than that, the front and the top panel are really fine for the most part. So next thing I'm doing, because there's really not much to improve in terms of cooling at this point, is probably removing at least three of these and duplicating this setup up here. And that would give you a possible 10 drive hard drives, which would be great for a home server setup or a high-end workstation. And with high-end workstations, you figure a lot of the time you're using air anyway, so it doesn't need to be tremendous liquid cooling support. On the back side, I would add one or two, probably two SSD sleds to the back of the motherboard tray. And then I would take the uh, rear panel and give it a maybe another tenth of an inch of space so that there's better kale management possibilities with ideally an added something to help with kale management either tie down points or maybe a small kale management bar that could help compress the cables when there's a whole bunch of them back there especially the 24 pin because that's kind of problematic 
I'm not sure that there needs to be any more space added to the bottom or the top or anything like that. The only thing you're lacking in all of this is liquid cooling support. Technically, you can remove these fans and mount radiators, but this case just does really well with air. And air is not necessarily interesting to people who are buying high-end $200 cases sometimes. They often want to go open loop. Now, I say often. It's still a really small segment of the market. But I don't know. Maybe if you were to make uh, eliminate some of my ideas here, and instead of going high-end workstation, you go high-end enthusiast, you could still keep a lot of drive cages, but get rid of these bays, and if needed, add some height, and pop a reservoir mount in there, and now you can support liquid cooling if you want it. The biggest problem, though, is at that point, you should probably have a radiator that's whatever 180 times 3 is in size, because that's what the, uh, that's the next challenge, because those fans are just obviously not going to cool a small radiator that well. They're not meant for it. So that's how I would do it. I still really like the case. I think it could still sell today, especially with the performance versus everything being awful. So Silverstone, if you're watching, and I, I think you are, then, uh, you know, consider it. Let's, let's, let's figure something out. Let's bring this one back because I really liked it. And I think it is one of the best cases we've ever worked with. In, in fact, it probably is the probably my favorite case I've personally worked with. So if I had to actually choose something out of all the cases we reviewed, to put my own system in, it's either this or on the opposite end, the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900, which I just liked for other reasons. It's not that great at cooling. But yeah, this is a big, big... Uh, Big success in my eyes. So hopefully it comes back. But either way, it's fun to look back at something from 2012. And also, I think there was one launched in 2009 as well. Uh, but yeah, patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you want to help us out directly. Subscribe for more coverage. As always, we're going to look at some more of the Silverstone large fans pretty soon. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, which we just restocked. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.